Earth's atmosphere contains a unique blend of gases that are in constant motion. As temperatures change, the air moves and carries with it minute particles of organic and man-made origin. On windy days, the desert air can become laden with soil and dust. And with the dust uploading all this particulate in the air, also come fungi. And uh, what we're trying to do is to see whether these fungi that are in the air, when we are inhaling them, will they cause some health problems. Fungal spores, including those from mold, can find their way into the air any time their environments are disturbed. They are found everywhere, in soil, plants, water, housing facilities, and concentrated animal feeding operations. And I like to think about them as follows, that uh, they feed us, they heal us, and they kill us. When I say they feed us, for instance, one good example will be we use them like mushrooms. When you buy this mushroom in the grocery, you can cook them and eat. And some of those go beyond gastronomic uh, property. They also have medicinal property. So they can heal us from that sense. And uh, the third role I attribute to the fungi is that they could harm us. Not that they are seeking out to harm us necessarily, but because of some of the intrinsic uh, property of fungi, if we come in contact with them, we could be harmed. The fungus coccidioids is known to cause an illness in humans called valley fever. Coccidioids lives in dry, sandy soil. When the soil is disturbed by wind or activities like farming or construction, the fungus becomes airborne. The airborne fungus enters through the nose and mouth, settles in the lungs, and causes infection. You get an excess of mucus and cough, and, and uh, it's difficult to diagnose because it looks like a standard viral infection, but really it originates from a fungus. You kind of have to recreate your steps and say, okay, well, I have a certain degree of symptomology, uh, and wh what have I been doing? Where have I been exposed to some resuspended uh, uh, d dust or dirt in a region that may have the types of fungi that, that might be related to valley fever? And is it also in the absence of um, being around a number of other folks who have uh, viral infections that you may have caught through other sources. So you have to do a little bit of investigations, I think, uh, to kind of figure out whether or not you should be uh, uh, investigated for whether or not you have a potential valley fever. Human health can also be impacted by exposure to certain types of mold, especially if the spores become airborne. You can find them uh, uh, on your carpet in your home, in the in the bathroom area, in the attic, in your home, in the agricultural field, in hay, pretty much anywhere where humans have activities. When you're mowing uh, the lawn, you're pretty much contributing in uh, getting some of these fungi into the air. If they've been growing in your grass, on the blade, so all the particulate that are emitted as part of the mowing process. As long as you have turbulence and wind, they can find their way into the air. So they're all around us in many environments. From an indoor perspective, it can be important. It's been brought up a lot when people move into new homes and there's mold and people anecdotally have respiratory uh, uh, illnesses. Uh, I say anecdotally because there haven't been a lot of studies that have linked types of mold, types of fungus to specific respiratory illnesses in a systematic way. So it's an area where there's certainly something to learn from and it's, uh, there's certain plausibility for uh, respiratory effects from mold and fungi, uh, but as a science, it's relatively new. Remember, not all fungi pose a risk to human health, but if you're concerned about airborne fungal spores, consider minimizing your exposure to potential sources. Be observant. Notice whether any change in your health can be related to your environment. Monitor daily air quality readings and wear a mask or stay indoors if recommended. For more information on air quality along the border, please visit nmborderair.nmsu.edu. This project is funded by the New Mexico Department of Health, Office of Border Health. The proceeding was a production of New Mexico State University.